friends, brothers and sisters from PNG to Australia. For some people that may not know, there's been a long historical and ancient connection through various trading routes, partnerships and relationships, all the way from where we're situated here today in Gimoy, Cairns, the tip of Cape York, Australia, through the Torres Strait. So this year's teams are on the First Nations policy and the ties between Australia and Papua New Guinea. Um, it's been a privilege to be among emerging leaders from both nations and um, be able to talk about um, issues that are facing our indigenous nation as well as the local communities that we work in. When we talk about education, I think the importance of that is being culturally um, inclusive. And when we're culturally inclusive, I think that we can move forward and we'll start developing better relationships. This was an opportunity to start talking about what does democratising power look like? How can we open up that space for more diverse voices to come to the table and just start sharing openly and honestly? So I think that's been like a really um, empowering or very strengths-based you know, opportunity for people just to start talking openly. There's a real strength that's come out um, through this meeting about how the connection between Indigenous Australia and people in Papua New Guinea would allow us to weave a kind of more honest conversation about who we are and who we want to be. You know, the 65,000 years of connection between these two places, there's literal family connections in the Torres Strait between people in Papua New Guinea and people in Australia. And it would allow us to kind of reframe the conversation about who we are and how we want to manage that relationship with the people in the Pacific. But if we took a different perspective and we reflected on the connections, the deep and long held connections that indigenous people have with people in Papua New Guinea, we'd be able to articulate a new and more meaningful relationship. It's because there are the historical ties, current ties, and there's so much opportunity for more future ties. It must affect the programs that Australia not runs with Papua New Guinea and all other Pacific Island countries. We'll make these connections and make these relationships for a long time and I'm going away not only as a professional but as a proud Papua New Guinean, a proud Australian citizen and a proud sister to my First Nations brothers and sisters and I cannot wait for us for what we're going to do in the near future. And the number of things that we do are similar. The amount of sort of grassroots initiatives that are that are already underway as a result of those existing relationships. And it has to be uh, from a, a very genuine uh, position uh, that will uh, take into account culture and also the way people interact with each other. Um, there has to be safe spaces uh, created for this, these uh, this engagement. It's been really interesting for me is that I work in international development and I spend a lot of my time thinking and talking about First Nations foreign policy approaches and what that could mean for Australia from a Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander perspective and from an Australian based perspective. But what's been really special about this week is being able to talk with Pacific Islanders and mob from PNG and hear about what they would like to see from a First Nation approach to foreign policy. Improve and increase and deepen our understanding of Papua New Guinea as a nation, as people. Um, I think that's where improved exchange between our two countries can really come into it. So in my example, I traveled to Papua New Guinea in 2019 as a new Colombo Plan Scholar, and I was able to study there, undertake internship, do language training. As much as all that helped me like professionally in that, it was my friendships and relationships I built and you know, going and visiting villages and having that real lived experience in PNG that gave me that understanding. Seeing the growth of sport and what that can mean for the people of PNG, just from that context, but also the relationships that we can build further in sport, but between countries is something that I'm keen to sort of see Indigenous solutions to global problems, um, not just for Indigenous problems and, and how we can approach dialogue and engagement, international engagement in that way. It is hard to build a sustainable program, a program that lasts for a long time for the long term with communities and that actually bring about long lasting change and impact within that community 
unless it's been built with them, you know, they, they know best about their situation, their problems, their issues, their hopes and aspirations and their struggles. Um, and we need to be better at listening to them. As an emerging leader, it is vital to have cohesively strategic plans in place for the best interest of our people. The key takeaways I've gathered from this whole week is two main themes of self-determination and walking through two worlds. They've been common themes that I've seen throughout several of the different discussions that we've had, including education, health, uh, sport, and a lot more. This is what this particular um, uh, forum has enabled for lots of diverse voices to come and have a seat at the table and share their, their lived experiences. And they've all been very enriching, very beautiful, very harrowing. This week has been um, absolutely eye-opening. It's been great learning, um, meeting new people, just being inspired by their stories and all around the discourse on um, First Nations policy. I'm so happy to yeah, be part of this. I really uh, enjoy the all conversations and yeah, I want to first thank you for, for, the, for this. Yeah. Just in terms of that self-determination and some of the questions that need to be asked and put into place for foreign policy, for First Nations people, is to be able to engage with the people where you're going in and trying to form those collaborative partnerships and making it meaningful rather than coming in and saying, you know, we've got this, we can help you here, but actually connecting properly 